Hello everyone and welcome to another expert Python tutorial. So in today's video we're going to be talking about context managers. Now context managers are definitely one of the more useful topics that we're going to be talking about or that we have talked about so far and you'll find yourself using them a lot especially as you get into more advanced programming and dealing with things like shared memory and shared resources and unlocking and locking and yeah it just all those kind of things contact managers come in very handy essentially. Now I'm actually almost certain that all of you have seen context managers before. In fact, I'll show you a few examples here of times when you've used them and just not known that you've used them. And that's kind of a common trend here that I'm hoping you realize is a lot of the stuff that we're using, it's not completely new to you. It's not something you've never used before. You just never really understood how or why it worked. And that's what the point of this series has been is to give you that appreciation and understanding of how these lower level things work so that you have more control over your code. And if you need to change them or write your own versions, you now know how, or at least have the intuition to do so. Now, again, this video is sponsored by kite, a big thank you again to them. You can see whenever we start typing, we get these little kite keywords popping up. It's just a really good autocomplete. And again, it's free. If you want to download it, it's from the link in the description, you can find that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with context managers. Now, the first thing that I want to do is show you what problem context managers solve to us. So I'm going to start or solve for us. So I'm going to start by showing us the problem and then the solution with the context manager. So essentially, let's say we have some file and we want to look, we want to open a file, right? So I want to open, say, file.txt. We'll open it in write mode, which just means create a new file if it doesn't exist yet. And then what we'll do is say file dot write. Let's say hello. And then we'll say file dot close. Okay, pretty straightforward, pretty basic. This will work, run this code, nothing wrong with it. But what actually is wrong with what I just wrote? Well, looking at this at a surface level, it seems like everything's totally fine. I mean, we've opened the file, we've written one line to it, in this case, hello, and then we've closed it. Now, the issue occurs in this code if this line here, so this filed out right line, doesn't work or it doesn't happen. For example, like if I just error this line by putting an X here, and then we run this, we can see that we don't make it down to this file.close line because we had some error on this write line. So say we open the file and we start trying to write, something happened, something else had the file open, we couldn't access it. Well, now we've opened the file and we haven't closed it. And that's an issue. And we need to make sure whenever we open a file or have some shared resource that we work with, that we close it afterwards. Now, a better example would probably be if I open this in read mode, um, as opposed to write mode, because that would mean that this file already exists on the system. But hopefully you get the point that the issue occurs when we open the file, we do a bunch of stuff, and we don't reach that file.close. So the point is, how can we make sure that we reach this file.close, no matter what happens in between the open and in between the close? Well, the way that we could do that is we could use a try and a finally statement, right? So we could leave what we have right here, and we can just add a try like that. And then we could add a finally uh, down here, if we indent that properly for the file.close. So what this means is regardless of if this works or not, we will eventually or finally close this file. So that's good. And we've just kind of fixed our error there and that's totally fine. But there's an easier and better way to do this that allows for a little bit more functionality. And what that is, is a context manager. Now this code right here is completely equivalent to what I'm about to write. So with open file.txt, we'll open an R mode again. We'll call this as file to be consistent. And we'll just simply say file.write. And in this case, hello. So these two kind of blocks, so this block up here and this block actually do the exact same thing. And the way that this works is this open method here actually defines what we should do when we use it as a context manager, when we exit and when we enter. So when we enter, what that means is, okay, when we open this file, when we write this code, what's the first thing that needs to happen? Well, the first thing that needs to happen is we need to open the file and we need to return that so we can store that as the file object. That's the thing that's happening when we enter this context manager. And we can tell we're using a context manager because we're using the with keyword and that's the most common way and kind of the only examples I'm going to show you here is using the with keyword in Python. Then what we do is we do something, whatever we have inside here, we could print something, we could, you know, file dot write, we could do a for loop, doesn't matter. And then when this is done, so all of the code in here, regardless of there, if, if there was an exception or not, we will call the exit method. And what the exit method does is some kind of code that allows us to close our file properly and make sure that everything works. 
So essentially, the context manager is kind of like a hidden way to make sure that whenever we do one operation, we do another one, regardless of what happens in between. And again, that's really useful for things like opening and closing files and for locking and unlocking shared memory. So now I'm going to show you how we can actually write our own context manager that does the same thing that we've just shown here. So we have this open fu function and we say with open file.txtr as file file.write hello. We understand that after this runs, regardless if there's an exception or not, we close the file. But how does that actually work? Well, let's try to do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make a class and we're going to write this context manager. So I'm going to say class file. I'm going to say define underscore underscore init. And since we just want to do the same thing we did before, we're going to take a file name and a method in our init. And we're going to say self dot file equals open file name method. Now, it's important to note that when we make a context manager, we don't necessarily need to use it as a context manager all the time. In fact, I'm going to start writing a context manager here and show you the methods we need to implement to do that. But right now, you know, the function that we have here, we can use this fine, even though, you know, it's going to be a context manager. We can instantiate it and we can use it as we usually would. We just aren't going to call these special methods that I'm about to write. So we have the first method, which is called enter. Now, remember, enter, I told you is the first thing that happens. And what this function needs to do is return to us some value that we're going to use in the context manager, right? When we wrote, for example, with something um, as, you know, F, then this something is going to call this enter method. So we're going to store whatever's returned from enter in F. So that's what we should get there. So here, what we're going to do on the enter is simply return self.file. And again, that should be the open file object. Then what we're going to do is define an exit method. So underscore, underscore, exit, underscore, underscore. And notice these are special dunder methods because they're going to be called in a special way automatically from Python because we're going to use the context manager syntax. So here actually takes three arguments and the three arguments or parameters. I guess we have our type. I believe we have. I'm going to look to make sure I haven't messed this up. We have value and then we have traceback. So essentially what this does is regardless of whether or not we get an exception between when we open or so between when we enter and between when we exit, if we get an exception, it's actually going to call this exit method with that exception so that we can handle the exception in here the way that we would like. And I'll talk about how that works a little bit more in a second, but let's just do what we wanted to do, which is self dot file dot close. So for now, we're actually going to omit the fact that uh, we're going to deal with these parameters, although we'll talk about them later. So in here, I'm actually just going to write some code, um, some print statements so that we can see what happens when we enter and when we exit these methods. So print enter print exit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the same thing I did before, except this time, instead of saying with open, I'm going to say with file. And the reason I'm allowed to do this is because I have this enter and exit method defining that this is a context manager. And I'm going to say with file, we have, let's say, you know, file .txt. Let's put that in, say, read mode. Um, actually, we'll put it in write mode. And then we'll put that as f. We can say f dot write. Hello, as the classic example that we've been using. And now let's actually run this code. And let's look at these print statements and make sure this works. OK, so we get enter and exit. And inside of here, I'm actually just going to put a print statement that says middle just so we can see how this works. So even though I haven't explicitly called this exit or this enter method, we can see that they do get called. So enter middle exit and they get called in the appropriate timing. Right. So this stuff happens in between the enter and the exit. And now what I'm going to do is simply put an exception in here. So I'll say, you know, put some letters here just to make sure this crashes. Let's run this. Um, and actually, sorry, that's going to be a syntax error. Let's see if there's any way that I can get this just to crash. Uh, let's just say raise exception like that. And now let's see if we still get um, our. Yes, we do. So we can see we get enter middle exit and then we get the exception raised afterwards even though we raised the exception before we got to this exit method so what this essentially says is regardless of if there's an exception or not we're going to call this exit method and the point of this is so that we can actually handle an exception inside of our exit method if we need to so i know this is kind of confusing to see in my trace down here because there's all this text but look what's happening right we can see that in line 17 an exception was raised but the thing is we still called this exit print um, and we still close the file, even though that exception was raised, which again is the advantage of a context manager. 
Okay, so what I want to do now is show you what this type value and traceback actually is. So we notice that what happens is essentially any exception that's raised inside of here actually gets sent to this exit function where it can be handled. And that's why we see this exit popping up here because we enter, we do this middle stuff, some exception was raised in the middle, that's fine. So we immediately go to this exit function where we pass that exception and we wait to see if it gets handled. And that's why all of this code in the exit function runs before we decide that we're going to crash the program or that something's going to happen. So what I'm going to do now is show you how we can actually handle an exception inside of this exit function and again what type value and traceback are. So now we'll keep printing exit, but we're also going to print all of the different values that are here. So we'll just use an F string and we're just going to do a bunch of commas so that we can see what all of these are. So type value and in this case traceback. So let's run this now. We're still going to get a crash in our code, but now we can see that we have a class exception, none, and then a traceback at some location. So if we wanted to, we could look at this traceback, we could look at the type of the exception and we can actually handle it. And in fact, the way that we handle an exception from our exit is if we determine that this exception is fine, that we shouldn't crash the program, that all is good, what we're actually allowed to do is return the key value true. So if we return true from this exit method here, that's going to tell Python that we gracefully handed this, handled this exception, which means we don't need to crash the code. We don't need to run or, you know, see all this trace back in the output here. We're fine and we're good to go. And in fact, if I run this, you can see that by simply adding this return true here, we no longer get a crash in our program and everything is fine. Now, be careful with this because you don't want to just add return true if there is actually exceptions and they need to be handled properly. In fact, a better practice would probably be to do something like if type equals equals and then whatever type of exception you were looking for. Maybe I raised like a file not found exception or something and we were looking for that specific one. Then what you could do is handle that exception inside of here and then return true in that instance. And in fact, this still works because the type was exception. Um, but I'm trying to see if I can raise like, yeah, so let's say file um, exists error. Like let's do something like that and run this and you can see now because that wasn't just a regular exception, this crashed because we didn't handle that properly. So that's how we can handle errors inside of this exit function. You just return true if when you check through this error that's passed in here, uh, you get you know some valid stuff and you can handle it, right? And if you don't return true and there's no error like we've seen, that's totally fine. So if we don't raise some exception, regardless of if we return true or not, Everything works fine and we're good to go. And that is one of the massive advantages of context managers. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how we can actually create this same context manager because this seems a little bit complicated using a generator. So we've talked about generators and we talked about decorators. And what we can actually do is import something called context lib. So we can import context lib like that. And from context lib, there's actually a decorator in here that allows us to decorate a generator that becomes a context manager. And I'm going to show you how that works. Okay, so let's do the same example we did before with opening a file, but now using a different kind, well, not really different kind, but just a different way of creating this uh, context manager. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to write this decorator and the decorator is context lib dot context manager like that. There's no brackets at the end. And in fact, what we could have done is said from context lib like this import context manager. And this is a built in library in Python. And that will just allow us to do this rather than having that um, dot beforehand. So let's do that. I'm going to say define file like this. And what I'm actually going to do is take again the file name and the method. And inside here, I'm going to say, okay, file equals open. And in this case, we'll say file name method. Then I'm going to yield, because again, this is a generator, the file object. And then I'm going to file.close. So what this means essentially is that the first thing we're going to do is say file. We're going to create this file object. We're going to yield this to wherever we're being called from. And then when this function resumes again, you can think of this as the enter, right? And this as the exit, we're going to close the file. And in fact, in here again, we can handle some exceptions. We can do things like that. And this is a quicker, easier way to actually make a context manager. So now I can say with file. And in this case, let's just say, you know, well, what have we been doing? I don't know. Let's just say text.txt. Let's switch it up here. Let's go W mode and we'll say as F. And we can say F.write 
let's say hello like that and if we run this code that's perfectly fine that works and now when we add our print statement so we'll say print uh enter like that and we'll print exit like that and then we can print middle and we can see how this is actually working okay so enter middle exit so this decorator allows us to turn this generator object into a context manager it works pretty much exactly the same as i talked about before there is more to go in and kind of dive in with this uh this syntax right here i typically recommend to people just to use the class syntax just because it allows you to do some more things into something more people are familiar with but if you want to use this context manager decorator and do some things with this generator kind of syntax um, to use a context manager you're more than welcome to and that's why I showed you so I think with that I'm gonna wrap the video up here an interesting idea though if you guys want to mess around with context managers is to think about locks in threading so actually from the threading module in Python I can't remember the syntax right now off the top of my head you can have shared memory um, and you can have locks and yeah like memory locks which essentially allow you to wait for another resource to give up this lock so that you can access a resource so the point is like say we have one variable x here that's going to be accessed by two different threads well we can't access and change x at the same time so we create a memory lock and what one thread will have to do is wait for that lock to be available before it's able to access the object and you can actually implement this functionality with a context manager so that your threads you make sure they unlock the resource before they finish changing it so that's something that's interesting if you want to mess with that i don't really have that much time in this video so i'm not going to do that um but yeah so with that being said this has been context managers i hope you guys enjoyed if you did make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and as always let me know if there's any other expert level features you would like to see